Hi, we're going to look at this uh, question about Rankine cycles. Uh, the first thing we're asked to do here is uh, sketch the layout of the plant uh, and a TS diagram. So the plant layout, standard Rankine cycle, it's important that you use the right, uh, well, that you at least you recognize the symbols. So here's our pump, uh, which is drawn like this because it's kind of a centrifugal pump. Uh, boiler uh, turbine and an axial turbine it's shaped kind of like a frustrum uh, of a cone it gets wider as the steam goes through it because the steam is getting uh, less dense as it goes through the steam is expanding we have our condenser which is another uh, basically another heat exchanger. Okay, whoops. Excuse the crappy drawing. And it's important that we number uh, the different states in the cycle. So traditionally state one is the pump inlet. You don't have to stick with that numbering, but it makes it easier for people to understand you if you do. Uh, we can stick a few arrows in just to show which uh, direction the flow is going around the cycle. So there's our plant layout. We need to draw a TS diagram as well. There's our saturation dome. Now we don't know yet exactly where uh, the different states are going to fall in the TS diagram, but it's good to think about it at this stage. There are a few critical bits of information that we have here. Uh, water is saturated liquid at the pump inlet, we're told. Uh, that's useful information, so that fix, that's a uh, pump inlet, that's state one, that fixes a point, uh, that fixes state one on the TS diagram. It's a saturated liquid state. Draw it in and number it. Um, the pump can be considered isentropic, as it usually would in a standard Rankine cycle, unless there's some other information. So the pump process is a vertical line, then we're into the uh, boiler process, which is going to do something like this. Uh, 495 Celsius, 14 megapascal, that's a high temperature, that's going to be a superheated state. In fact, that's a supercritical temperature, though it's not supercritical pressure, so our state 3 is out here, it's well superheated. Now, uh, what about state 4? The isentropic efficiency of the turbine is 86%, so it's not an isentropic process. So our turbine process, uh, since it's not isentropic, it slopes down and entropy increases as we go down the turbine process. Uh, so our state 4 is here. State 4 might be superheated or it might be saturated, uh, we can't tell at this stage. The way that I've sketched my diagram, uh, state 4 falls out here in the superheated region. That might or might not be right. The process in 4 back to 1 then, through the condenser. The condenser is typically constant pressure. So there's a constant pressure curve that takes us back to state uh, 1. Okay. Now, there's one other thing we need to add to this diagram, which is the ideal uh, isentropic turbine. Our real turbine is not isentropic. We're going to have to compare our real turbine at some point with an isentropic turbine. And this is what an isentropic turbine would look like. So we uh, draw that there and we call it exit state 4S. And the way that you know where to put 4S is that it's at the same pressure as state 4. And that is a, uh, that's the rule. That's, that's how you define this uh, isentropic turbine. So there's our uh, plant layout and our TS diagram, and this detail is important. This detail of the non-isentropic turbine is important in the TS diagram. So part B of the question, we're asked to find the thermal efficiency of the cycle, which really means uh, analysing uh, the whole cycle. We're going to need to know the enthalpy at every state in the cycle. Okay, so let's get started on that. So part B. Uh, it is very helpful when you're uh, doing these things to maintain a table of uh, it's not essential but it's helpful to, to keep a table of 
uh, properties at each stage. Uh, just to keep track of things. Okay, now, <clears throat> at state, so we start at state one and work our way around the cycle. State one is a saturated liquid at, what do we know about state one? The condenser pressure, we're told, is 20 kilopascals. So state one is saturated liquid at 20 kilopascals. We will go to the table, go to the steam tables, um, 20 kilopascals, uh, we get an enthalpy of this, 251.4. Okay. State 1, <coughs> H1 is 251.40 kilojoules per kilogram. 251.4, 20 kilopascals. Uh, we don't really care what the um, what the temperature there is yet. I think. Now, so that's all we need to know about state one. State two, we don't know much about state two. We know what pressure it's at because the boiler pressure is 14 megapascals, and that boiler pressure is P2 and P3. So might as well uh, fill that in in our little table. That's 14,000 kilopascals. And at state four, it's going to be back to 20 kilopascals. Uh, the, okay, now, uh, so 14,000 um, kilopascals. Now, what we know about state two is right now we know uh, pressure and we know uh, entropy because we know that the pump is isentropic. So we could go to the compressed liquid tables using the entropy and the pressure, two properties. Uh, but a much easier way to do this is to use uh, a shortcut uh, because we know that for a steady flow reversible process, uh, the work, the specific work, that's a small w, 1w2, is equal to v1 times P2 minus P1. Uh, and I'm not absolutely right there. It's a steady flow reversible process in an incompressible fluid. So this is a, a somewhat special handy trick for dealing with uh, pumping of liquid water. So this is easy because we can look up V1 easily. We know P2 and P1 and that will give us 1W2. Okay? So for us that's going to be uh, V1 is this 101.72, so that is 0 0.001.0172 times the pressure difference, 14,000 kilopascals minus 20 kilopascals, and don't forget to keep track of the units. Very common mistake here is to uh, mess up the units of pressure here. So I'm multiplying by 1000 to bring them back to single pascals. So that gives us um, <coughs> two times uh, what is that? 13,980 times 1000. And that result is in joules per kilogram, so it's 14.22 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, first law for the pump. Uh, tells us if the pump is assumed to be adiabatic and if we neglect kinetic and potential energy changes, then the work that the pump does on the water is equal to the enthalpy rise of the water. So that gives us H2 uh, is H1 plus 1W2 is 251.4 plus 14.22 is 26. 
5.62 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay. 265.62. Okay, now, uh, so that is state 2 sorted out. Uh, state 3, we know a lot about state 3, we know it's at 14 megapascals, 495 Celsius. Um, that looks like it's going to be a superheated condition. Fourteen megapascals, here we go. Fourteen megapascals, four nine five Celsius. <coughs> okay, so we need to interpolate between five twenty and four eighty in this thing. Okay. 495 minus 480 uh, is 15 divided by 40.375. So it's going to be 0 0.375 times uh, 33.8 minus. That's our H3, 3306.99. Uh, so, so T3 is 495 Celsius, P3 is 14 megapascals, implies that H3 is 33, 33, point oh, I'll call it, since we've only kept one significant figure for the other enthalpies, one decimal place rather, for the other enthalpies, 3307.0. Okay, now, um, so we come to state 4. We can't deal with state 4 yet, before we deal with state 4 we're going to deal with state 4s, okay? What we know about state 4s is its pressure, which is the condenser pressure, and we know its entropy, which is the entropy of state 3. So let's uh, write that stuff down. Uh, at state 4s, we have P4s equals P4 equals 20 kilopascals. S4s equals S3. We need to find out what S3 is by doing the same interpolation that we did for the uh, enthalpy. So it's 0 0.375, oops, 375 times uh, the value at 520. So it's 0.461 minus the value at 480. Six point three six nine three. Six point three six nine three and that is kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Uh, so that is two properties of state four S. State four S is known. Now we what we really want is the enthalpy at four S. So we need to find out now, we need to find out for real now whether four S is actually uh, a saturated state, like I've drawn it here, or if maybe it's actually out here somewhere. Okay, so we do that by going to the saturated water table. We know we're at 20 kilopascals. Where are we? Twenty kilopascals. Uh, so saturated liquid 
entropy is 0.83, saturation vapor entropy is 7.9. So this point here, this entropy is about 7.9. This one is something much smaller, uh, 0 0.83. So our entropy, our, our S4S, which is uh, 6.3 something, is in between saturated liquid and saturated vapor. Okay, so as drawn, it's correct. State 4S is actually saturated.